<clears throat> when we dry with evaporator potential, um, it gives the ability for the technicians to make those decisions on site. And there's two ways to affect it. What we're going to see here very quickly is if I don't have the evaporation potential that I need, then there's two things I can do. The first thing I can do is I can raise the, turf, the surface temperature of the affected surface. So if I have a piece of drywall there that is wet, and the first day I come there, and I, I only have an evaporation potential going on of 0.6, well, automatically as a technician, because I'm trained on evaporative potential, I know that, well, if I raise the temperature of that, if I add some energy to that material, then I'm automatically going to increase the evaporation potential. So adding surface temperature to the affected surface is one. The second is in the affected area, if I can bring the relative humidity down, the amount of moisture in the environment, if I can bring that down, oh, remember, there's that difference. Right? The more difference I get between those two, the greater evaporation potential. Let's see how that works. So in this, uh, in this example here, I have 75 degree air temperature, 55 relative humidity, and who here's this fancy grains per pound, 71. All right, is this enough information? And I ask, is this enough information? Because I've been able to review a lot of different drying logs from other contractors, and this is the common information you're gonna find on all of them. But is this enough to make any kind of sound decision about what's going on in that environment? Well, I will tell you, the only thing I can tell from this is the air temperature seems a little low for a drying environment, and the relative humidity is below 60%, which for our environment, for our profession, is a target. We need to get below 60% in 24 hours so we don't promote microbial growth. But that's about all I can tell. And this right here tells me how much moisture is in the air. Interesting, but not compelling. Not much I can do with this, although I hear a lot of contractors say, hey, man, how'd that job you were on? What are your grains? Oh, I don't care, really. Because uh, if you remember from Jason's uh, lecture, grains per pound is a specific humidity measurement of the moisture in the air, right? Well, I can tell you, there's not a single insurance company provider out there that pays me to dry the air. I don't get paid to dry air. I get paid to dry wet materials. And moisture is going to go in the air, and you can just about guarantee I'm going to take it out because I get paid to put a dehumidifier in there. Okay, so this information alone, although it looks kind of cool, it's not really telling me anything. Let's add to it. Oh, here's some vector information. All right, now I've got surface temperature. All right, I'm finding this stuff out, and oh, in this condition, I've got an EP of 1.14. Is that my goal? No. No, I want 1.5 or greater, and then I know I'm cooking with gas. All right, what can I do? Well, in the first example, I'm gonna show you just by reducing the relative humidity. So I put a dehumidifier in there, and at 24 hours, I took the relative humidity in here from 55 to 45. Very easy to do, 24 hour period. All right, just by doing that and nothing else, I didn't affect the temperature in the room, I've raised up to 1.44. I'm getting a little better, things are happening now. All right, or, boom, here's another example. I didn't change much, all I did was change the surface temperature. Now I added, so I put, I put the dehumidifier exhaust right up next to that. Now I got a little bit more temperature coming out. I only raised the temperature five degrees. That's easy to do, but what did I do? Now I'm up here 1.64. Right, now I've got a decent evaporation potential going on, but I would never just do those individually. I'm gonna do them at the same time, right? I'm gonna lower the humidity in the room and raise the surface temperature, and then bam, now I've got some vet core written all over this thing. 1.8 evaporation potential. Right, and I'm, I, haven't even, I haven't even sweated the homeowners out of the home yet. We're 78 <laughs> degrees. All right? So I've got a decent environment. Homeowners can stay in there. They're not drastically affected. I raised the temperature only five degrees from what it was when I first got there. I can do that with an air mover. All right? Easy to do. So that is the difference. That's what evaporation potential does for us. It allows us to go in, make sound decisions, on what to do in that environment based on science. All right. <clears throat> now I've already told you that I am colorblind. So even though in your book 
you've got an evaporator, evaporation potential chart. Uh, I don't use that for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right? But like everything else on this planet, there is an app for that. All right? And it's right here. And it makes it so easy for our technicians. Our technicians can go onto any site. They can take air temperature in the affected area, relative humidity in the affected area, and take that thermometer ahead and get a surface temperature. Three readings, plug it into this app, and it automatically prevents, provides them with the evaporation potential. Instant information, now they are armed to make sound decisions. All right, so we're not drying in six or seven days and charging four, five, six thousand dollars for a project. Now we're going in there, our average job, 24, 72 hours at about 18 to 2100 bucks. Big difference. Okay.